here we go. This is so much easier today. You're going to love it. You're going to love it. Watch it be hard. All right, number one in your homework. I'm dressed for the weather. I live in a very old, almost 100 year old house that's very drafty. So it, you know, can't hurt to bundle up. OK, here we go. We are going to factor C squared. Plus 6C. Plus 5. All right, now this is a quadratic trinomial because highest power is 2. Anytime the highest power is 2, it's quadratic. And it's called a trinomial 1, 2, 3 because there are three terms. That's the only reason. But it's good to be able to classify these, they're called mathematical objects, these expressions just to be able to classify them. Because when A equals one, when the A number equals one, you can immediately do this. Break the C squared apart into C and C and then factor the constant at the end. Rather than multiplying by AC, we just look at C. I suppose it really is AC because one times five is five, but then you don't have to go through all the steps that you had to go through yesterday. That's the great thing. I'm going to factor five so I'm going to write factor there. Factor the constant. Let me make this bigger. And then I'll erase that messy thing. There. And as you can see, George is here. He couldn't wait to talk to you. Factor the constant. I'm feeling insecure. Let me check and make sure I'm really recording. Yes, I am, okay. Um, okay, factor the constant, that means factor C. Well, we've got five, and five equals one times five, and that's it except for negative one times negative five, but, but the factors, we need the factors of five that will add up to the B number here, which is six. And notice that one plus five equals six. Cool, cool greens, cool, cool beans, cool grits, depends on where you live in the country. This is a positive one and a positive five, so I write plus one and plus five, and I'm done. Except, of course, I should always check. But do you see how easy that is? All because the leading coefficient is positive one. Let's, let's do this again. This is just so great. 1, C squared, plus 6, C, plus 5. Because 1 is the leading coefficient, positive 1, I immediately make my parentheses. I split C squared apart into C and C. And then I factor the constant at the end 
into two numbers that add up to the middle number. So plus one and plus five. And you are done. These are so great. Let's choose another. How about number two? Whatever that is. T squared plus 8T minus 20. Number two. Okay. The first thing you want to notice is that you have an invisible one right there in front of the T squared. That means your A number is one. That means your life is going to be a lot easier than it was yesterday. All right, when one is your leading coefficient, all you do is you take your constant at the end and factor it into two numbers that add up to eight. Let's give that a try. Okay, this will be one, well, negative one times positive 20, negative two times positive 10, Negative three, no. Negative four times positive five. And negative five times positive four. Okay, so one times negative 20, two times negative 10, and four times negative five. I need two numbers that will add up to positive eight. So I look through these and then I notice try to figure out where to write it. Negative two plus positive ten is is positive eight. So that's what I need. So I take my T squared apart, put one of the T's here and one of the T's here. Then I take my two numbers. Negative two becomes minus two and positive 10 becomes positive 10 or plus 10. And that's it. That's all there is to it. When one, positive one, is the leading coefficient and the highest power is two, and you have one, two, three terms. Let's look at another one. Oh my, at first it looks like this is not one of those problems. We have, write it bigger for you, 12, there's no reason I can't scroll it up. We have 12C plus C squared plus 32. But it's not written in descending order. Once you write it in descending order, you find out you have C squared plus 12C plus 32. And the leading coefficient is one. So we can use the easier method.
boom, 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 boom. Take C squared, put it there. Then I'm going to factor 32 into two numbers that add up to 12. So 32 is going to equal one times 32 and two times 16 and three, no, but four, four times eight. Now at this point, if you realize that four plus eight is 12, you don't have to go any further. But I suppose we should, it's kind of our duty. Six, no, six does not go in there. Okay, seven, eight. Ah, okay. We, would, we could go over to negative one times negative 32, but since this is positive, we don't really need to. All right, four plus eight is 12, the middle number. So that means I'm going to be working with plus four and plus eight. So plus four and plus eight. Bye, George. This is wonderful. OK. Go to number four. Here's another one. W squared minus 15W plus 54. Ah. My joy juice is gone. Well, it's all right. This is joy juice because the leading coefficient is one. That's all it takes to cheer me up. Um, I take W squared. Now notice I'm assuming that I'll be able to factor this. Sometimes they are not factorable, not over the rational numbers, which include the integers and the fractions. And that's what we're dealing with right now. But you have to admit those numbers are a lot easier than, well, some of the numbers you're going to meet as we go along. All right, so I'm going to take the number at the end, 54 the constant, and I'm going to start factoring it. And remember, we used a calculator to help yesterday, so you can always do that. 1 times 54. 2 times, hmm, 27. Yes. 3 times, Good grief, I think I will. Okay. Come on, come on. 18. Thank you. Thank you. But while I'm here, I might as well show you. Go to Y equals, click 54, divided by X. And then don't hit graph, hit second graph. And now we'll have one times 54, two times 27, indeed three times 18, six times nine. Let's see what the others are, if there are others.
and nine times six, they start to reverse. So here we go, and I, I hope that two of these will add up to, uh oh, oh, no, they won't. A positive number can also equal a negative number times a negative number. So we're going to go to negative one times negative 54. Negative two times negative 27. Negative three times negative 18. And negative six times negative nine. There you go. Negative six plus negative nine equals negative 15. Those are our numbers. Those are the numbers we want. So negative six becomes minus six and negative nine becomes minus nine. And then, you know, you can always do a quick multiplication in your head. And part of that was uh, part of the value of FOIL was that you learned how to multiply two binomials quickly in your head. But if you don't want to do that, or if you learned the other way, then just do it now. There and there and there and there, and W times W is W squared, W times minus nine is minus nine W, uh, negative six times W is minus six W, and negative six times negative nine is positive plus 54, um, if I've taken away nine W's and then I take away another six W's, that means I've taken away 15 W's. And that indeed is what I started with. So that means that this factorization is correct. You don't have to write down a check, but it's a good idea to do it in your head. If you can. Yeah. All right, oh, just forget it. We'll do this later. Okay. Um, are there questions about this? You know, you can do do um, um, the AC and grouping method if you want to. Let's do the next one that way. I don't actually know what the next one is. Ah, not bad. Let's do that. Well, I wasn't quite ready to do that. OK, uh, number five. All right, B squared. Minus six B. Plus five. OK, now suppose. I practiced a lot last night. And I got really good at the AC method. And I want to know why Miss Rademacher won't let me do it. Well, let me show you. You can. You can do it. It's OK by me. Multiply the first number and the last number together. and factor that number into its factor pairs. Times, that's supposed to be a times. And 
and then find one of those that adds together into negative six. And it just so happens that negative one plus negative five equals negative six. So negative one and negative five are going to be my, my choice of numbers. So I rewrite, I rewrite the trinomial with minus one B minus five B. Then I need to move my, my minus over because remember that's going to be in the parentheses with these two terms. And I'll put parentheses around the first two terms, parentheses around the second two terms, leave the plus in the middle. Now notice that both of these terms have a 1B in them. So B is going to be my GCF. And I'll be left with B minus one. So here's the GCF and here are the leftovers. Now, here the leading term is negative, which means I need to do this. Negative five B plus negative five times negative one. Negative five times negative one is positive five. Now, both of these terms have a negative five in them. I can pull that out as the GCF. So I'll have B times B minus one plus negative five And a mark through the negative five there. This was this was just all, already, you know, it was already in a factored form. But here I might as well go through the whole procedure. B plus a negative one is minus one. So I have B times B minus one plus negative five times B minus one. B minus one now becomes the GCF. And the leftovers are B plus a negative five, which is minus five. And there you go. This is exactly the same answer you would get if you use the quicker, easier method for this, since the leading coefficient is one. Okay, boom, 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 boom. Take B squared and split it apart. And then factor five, well, we've already done that up here. And negative one, negative five. Because negative one plus negative five is negative six. So that means these are the numbers I'm going to use. So I use them here. You can use the shorter method when you have a one GCF, or you can just always use the AC method when you have a quadratic trinomial. And it's factorable. Next week, we're going to meet some that are not so factorable. And then we have a new challenge. Isn't that a joy? Okay. Now, 
take a look at this. And I'm sure you know what to do, especially after yesterday, because we did it over and over and over again. Number six, let me write this down. There. Number six, we have 2y squared minus 8y minus 64. So there might be an urge to use the AC method since your leading coefficient is not two. But remember that your first step when you're factoring anything is to check out whether or not there's a GCF for all three terms. And there is. Two goes into two, two goes into negative eight, and two goes into negative 64. They're all, all three of those numbers are even numbers. So I'm going to rewrite them like this. Two y squared plus two times negative four times y plus two times negative 32. Yes, okay. All right, so that lets me pull out two as my GCF for all three terms, my greatest common factor. And then I write the leftovers. Well, I can mark out the two if I want to, because I've used it. The leftovers are a y squared in the first term, a one y squared, um, plus a negative 4y, so minus 4y, plus a negative 32, so minus 32. And now I can factor this. But notice there's a 1. So I can, if I want to, just use the easier method. 2 parentheses, parentheses. Take the y squared and split it apart. Now I'm ready to put in the numbers once I find out what they are. So I'm going to factor negative 32 into all the numbers that equal negative 32 when they're multiplied together and they have to be integers. We're only working with integers here. Integers are whole numbers that can be positive or negative. Okay, so uh, let's say negative one times 32 and negative two times 16. And we've been through this before, haven't we? Um, negative four, times eight and one times negative 32 and two times negative 16 and four times negative eight. And I look at these and I look at these and say, gosh, golly darn, or something to that effect, maybe a little stronger like WTF. Which ones add up to negative four? And I go, oh yeah, four plus negative eight equals negative four. So I've got my numbers. Positive four, which means plus four, and negative eight, which means minus eight. And I'm done. As long as there's that wonderful magical one 
in the leading term position, these things tend to be pretty fast. At least the ones you learn in school. When it gets to real life, that's a whole different matter. But don't worry about real life right now. One of the things I like about real life, I mean about school, is that it's not real life and real life is much too complicated. In case you haven't noticed. Let's not go there, it's depressing. All right, now I hope I haven't bored you all to tears because there's no real drama here, not yet, and I don't actually remember what I put in here. It was a while ago. So, uh, yeah, now we get to change. Okay. This is my very favorite method of factoring because it's so easy. And this is the one such that when I was a student, I used to pray before a test a lot, but pray in particular that one of those problems would be on the test because they're so easy. They're even easier than the leading term one. Let me show you. Here's number seven. W squared minus 25. Now this is a binomial. It is quadratic because the highest power is two, but it's not a trinomial. It's not a trinomial like these all were. It's a binomial, two terms. By means two. Okay. The neat thing about these two particular terms is that W squared is W times W and 25 is 5 times 5. Now what that means is you've got W squared minus 5 squared. That's why W squared and 25 are called perfect squares. And this binomial is an example of something called the difference difference of squares. And there's a method for factoring nice things like this that are a perfect square minus a perfect square. First, the word difference in the math language means uh, subtract. Subtraction. So this only works when you have um, a, a perfect square minus a perfect square. If you have a perfect square plus a perfect square, eh, you can't factor it. Not factorable. At least not factorable right now. In case you were wondering, right now we are in the world of intermediate algebra. If you were in an intermediate algebra class, just an intermediate algebra class, you would be learning to factor now. So since this is a combined intermediate algebra and college algebra class, 
you are learning to factor now. Okay, so let's get back to our perfect square minus perfect square. There's a model that you can use for this, a formula. A squared minus B squared. This has nothing to do with the A and B in quadratic trinomials. You just have to get used to um, the fact that there are only 26 letters and mathematicians seem to love the first five letters and then X and Y and Z more than any other number of uh, letters. Then they love U and V too. But, you know, I mean, A, B, and C get overused dramatically. Well, when you have the difference of two squares, this is how they factor. You have something squared minus something squared. You make two sets of parentheses. I love it when you have to do that and you don't have to do a whole lot of stuff in the middle. Take your A, put it here and here. You're splitting it up, it's A squared. So you're putting one of the A's here, one of the A's there. Now the same thing for B squared. Put one of the B's here and one of the B's here. We're gonna put something in the middle. Here we go. You put a plus sign there and a minus sign there. Now you're asking yourself, would the world come to an end if I put the minus sign here and the plus sign there? No, it would not. It's just years of working with it has taught me that some other things you have to do with it later, maybe later today, is um, it's just easier if you put your minus behind your plus. But that's entirely up to you. You'll see. You'll see. Um, OK, so here's our model anyway. Now, if W is the A and 5, see the 5 squared? If 5 is the B, then the way you're going to factor W squared minus 25 is, oh, it's easier if you turn it into W squared minus 5 squared. You don't have to. It's easier. Boom, 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 boom. W, W, 5, 5, plus minus, you're done. It's honestly all there is to it. It is necessary that you recognize your perfect squares. But I only have them memorized up to 13. 13 squared is 169. And then I start fumbling. OK. I mean, there are an infinite number of perfect squares, so nobody can memorize all of them. Let's do number eight. <gasps> now. 4A squared minus 4q squared. Even though 4 is a perfect squared, square, the fact that you have a GCF in each of these terms means you have to pull it out because that's a bigger rule. I mean, there's a temptation to say, OK, 2A squared minus 2Q squared. And then say, boom, this is wrong, wrong. 
So let me warn you, this is wrong. But this is just a temptation. Two A, two A, two Q, two Q, plus, minus. And my math lab would say it was wrong, and so would I. I would give you partial credit. Probably my math lab would not. That's because look at this. Look at these two terms. You still have a GCF. You would need to pull that out. And look here, you've got a GCF. Two is the GCF, so you'd have to pull that out. And then you would have to multiply the two and the two, so you'd have four. It would take a lot of steps. I mean, not that many, okay. It's not like the AC method, but it's still, and you can rescue yourself if you do it, this is the right answer. But let's just go with the bigger, more important rule that you always pull out a GCF first if it's there. So I'm going to start over and do it the right way, correct, hopefully. Four A squared minus four Q squared. Pull out the four. Now I've got A squared minus Q squared. This is the difference of two squares. And it's perfectly factored. So I'll put an A there and an A here and a Q here and a Q here and a plus and a minus. And look at that, I did it in three steps instead of, well, this is three, isn't it? Well, no, because I had to put it in that form. So this one is four steps. Okay, it's not the worst thing in the world, but this is just better and cleaner. And you're more likely to get the problem right if you go ahead and factor a GCF first, when it applies to all the terms in the problem. All right, last problem. Number nine, you don't get out that easily. 16V cubed minus 25V. This is number nine. 16V cubed minus 25V. Well, that's kind of tricky. Uh, 16 is four times four. It's a perfect square. That is not a perfect square. 25 is a perfect square, we already saw that, but V is not a perfect square. Oh my goodness, both terms have Vs. This is 16 times V times V times V minus 25 times V. Both terms have a V. And that V needs to be pulled out to the front. Make it blue. All right, what's left? What's left? I'll have 16 V squared minus 25. <gasps> now, 16 is a perfect square. 
it's four times four. V squared is a perfect square, it's V times V. 25 is a perfect square, it's five times five. So, I can write this as 4V squared, that's a square. Try it again, Barbara. Minus, might as well put it in parentheses, five squared. Now this, as you can see, is uh, a perfect square minus a perfect square. And these guys don't share a GCF any longer. So my V GCF is on the outside, and then this is going to be factored. Well, you know, I could make it smaller. So it would kind of fit in here. like that. So I'd have 4V, 4V minus 5, minus 5. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah! Uh. Don't do it in that order. See what happens. Always use the same order and you won't go wrong. Plus, minus, ta-da! You wanna build up body memory. So I love these difference of squares, the very most of any factoring problem. And then, I love quadratic trinomials in which the leading coefficient is one, because quite honestly, being a basically lazy person, I don't have to do a whole lot of work. But it's with the other problems. The, uh, the ones we did yesterday, where the leading coefficient is not a one, not a positive one, and so I have to use the whole AC and then grouping methodology to solve it. Nobody in their right mind would like it, but you still have to master it. Okay. Now. We get to the issue of why the heck do we have to go to all this trouble? And that is a valid question. So get your mind oriented to learn something you've already known before, but it's in a new context with new words. Okay, mostly we have been factoring, not exclusively, but mostly, we've been factoring quadratic trinomials. All right, AX squared, there you go, plus BX plus C. Hey, Professor, I have a question. Yes. Um, when I tried to find the notes for this week, uh, it didn't have like a link or anything that I could like click on to print them out. There is now. Okay, all right, thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, but you have to go to module five because it's the fifth week. 
Yeah, I went to module five and it just had like um, the what the notes were going to be about, but it didn't have like a link or anything to click when, on. When did you go? Uh, last night. OK, I put them up last night. Maybe we just. Missed each other. Maybe. Maybe, but I will go back and check again after class. So thank you for mentioning that. Thank you. OK, we're going to be dealing with quadratic trinomials. And their functions. So we're going to have f of x. Equals a x squared plus b x plus c. And so um, they might be like some of the ones we just factored or some of the ones we factored yesterday. Um, might have something like f of x equals 3, hmm? 3 x squared plus 2 x minus 1. Maybe. Or might have something like f of x equals negative 3 x squared plus 2 x minus 1. Now, I'm not going to actually graph those with a graphing calculator. But what I am going to do is we're going to be talking about how to graph them. OK, so actually, Wait a minute. Let's make this real. Suppose that I know that I have a, quadra <clears throat> a quadratic trinomial, or no, let's let it be this. Suppose I know that I have a graph of some kind and it has two x-intercepts, and let's just make them up. Well, but yeah, we're gonna do our best here. Let's say that one one of the x-intercepts is negative three, and another one is positive two. These are called zeros. When we, <clears throat> when we turn ax squared plus bx plus c into a function, then the x-intercepts are called zeros. There are some other things that are zeros too, and we're gonna talk about that next week, maybe. Maybe the week after, I'm not sure. But suffice it to say that right now, x-intercepts have a different name that you're gonna be using more and more. First, let's write these as x-intercepts. Negative three would be negative three, zero. And two would be two, zero, right? That's the way you write intercepts. Something new for most of you will be the fact that the x-coordinate of the x-intercept, namely negative three and positive two, are called zeros. 
Actually, this is one zero, of course. And this is a zero. Now, that's the short name for it. The longer name is zero of the function. The reason they're called zeros, what zeros do, is that if you, if you, let's just put it in English, if you plug negative three into the function, then the function equals zero. They make functions equal zero. That's what a zero does. but they do something else very, very important. This is one of the things that zeros do, but zeros do something else. Zeros generate functions. They create functions. All the functions we deal with got generated by their zeros. The zeros were there first, and they created, well, or the functions were created from them. We are going to create a function from these two zeros. I just want you to know how important factoring is. All right, once upon a time, there were two lonely little zeros. We call this one Z1, just to say it's the first one. And this one Z2, which just means it's the second zero. That's all it means. Now, these guys are going to make a function. Kind of like two kids building a sandcastle. They're bored, and then one day they decide to make a sandcastle. Well, the first step is to do this. F of X. Now, I am simplifying the whole procedure a little bit, but don't worry about it. There are two zeros. So we're going to put them in this formula. X minus Z1 times X minus Z2. And of course, I know what Z1 and Z2 are. F of X equals X minus negative 3 times X minus 2. Notice that these look like just what you get when you factor a quadratic trinomial. F of X equals X plus three times X minus two. Now we're going to multiply them together. And notice that as we do this, we're going backwards from factoring. 
we're doing exactly the same steps, but going in the other direction. So X times X, X times minus two, positive three times X, positive three times negative two or minus two. That will give me X squared minus 2x plus 3x minus 6. That'll give me x squared plus 1x minus 6. This is the function that was generated from these zeros. The reason we factor is to find out what the original little generators were. They are so powerful that in economics, they're the points where economies of nations or of individual businesses turn around. You'll learn more about that too. But suffice it to say that factoring is very, very, very important to the entire world. And you'll, especially if you're a business major, You'll learn so much more about this. But, 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 let's graph it and see what it looks like. X squared plus X minus six. Go to Y equals and go to Y. Oh, turn it on first. I have such a problem with that. Y equals. Now I'm going to uh, delete that, clear it. And I'm going to put in X squared plus X minus six. And then I'm going to graph. That's what the graph of this function looks like and the zeros and the x-intercepts are negative three and positive two. I'm gonna take a picture of this and stick it on the notes. And you can see negative one, negative two, negative three, and one, two. I just wanted to show you the whole reason we're doing this. It's not just a little exercise to make you miserable, which is easy to fall into sometimes when you're a student. These are just the, the hoops they make us jump through. But this, even though it seems like hoops, <clears throat> it's not. It's really genuinely, genuinely important. And we're going to learn so much more about quadratic functions. Functions where the highest power is two. They look like this. They look like U's, except they, they tilt out to the right and out to the left. Or if I were to put a negative, hmm. 
If I were to put a negative in front of this, what I would get, I'm going to do that. Where's my calculator? There it is. All right, I'm going to go back here. I'm going to rewrite this. As negative X squared minus X plus six. See, that's kind of the partner of this. They can also look like this, and you're going to find out when they look like that. So let me, oh, yeah, let me do this. This is the graph of f of x equals negative x squared minus x plus 6. It also has the zeros at negative 3 and positive 2 on the x-axis which means it also has x-intercepts, negative three, zero, and two, zero. Our function could have generated this, and there are certain circumstances where that would happen. You don't have to know about them now. I just want you to know that x-intercepts as you usually think of them, are going to change names. At least the x-coordinate of the x-intercepts. And that quadratic trinomials, or quadratics of any kind, look like this. That is, quadratic functions look like this. If they're not functions, then they're laying on their side and it's not a function. But they're quadratic also. and you can look those up. But this is it for today. I wanted you to see this and to know the general information that we are heading into because next week we're going to be finding zeros of functions. The first steps in finding the zeros of functions. And all they really are when you graph them usually is the x-intercepts with special circumstances when they are something else. Okay, I hope this is food for thought and we're gonna start finding zeros tomorrow. Okay, see you then. Hang around if you have questions. Have a good day. You too. Stay off the ice. Don't drive. Well, our road, our road is not nothing but ice, yeah. so yeah. Okay, bye bye. Bye bye. I am going to stop recording, but I'm going to be sitting here working on getting the notes and the video up and making sure those other notes and videos are up.